This video is sponsored by Muscle Shirts, the premier online store for everything car related. Please check us out at muscleshirts.online and support us by getting one of our awesome products. We have a 15% discount for you at the checkout. Link in the description. I see conditions. We do keep cars. <laughs> guys um we're gonna now put on the coil that i ordered i ordered another one and it says it's got three more bad coils but we're gonna see if we can get away with just one more because i really don't want to spend too much money it's just i don't know they want to spend the least amount of money as possible so that's, that's what we're doing right now just to see to to see how we can get it running really good okay without triggering a engine light or something like that all right all right we got the new one here and the, these supposedly test good, but after a while, the computer kicks it out and uh, it's no longer good. So we're gonna replace this one. Okay, the number one, and today, and see how well it runs, okay? If it runs better, that means these have to be replaced as well. So that's what we're gonna do right now, okay? So, let me get this thing out. Okay guys, so we'll get this number one out. So the computer says these three are still bad, but my testing says these three are not good, but they're still doable, but the computer has rejected them, so I'm going to replace it with a new one. Did I ever tell you guys how hard it is to take something out of a package using one hand, Jesus Christ. Oh, by the way, look at that coil. That's very melted. What you don't want to do, guys, you don't want to keep driving a car that got hot. That's what you're going to get. You're going to get blown head gasket and every little sensor in this whole engine is going to be broke. And it's going to bankrupt you, you know what I mean? So, that's why you don't do that. Thank God that there's this world that I live in that has cheap parts, which is good. Okay, now we're going to see how it runs now. Okay, I'm going to... Open up the program. Connected to OBD. Yeah, that's a good sign. All right, we're gonna go to the fault code area, and we are going to clear the codes. Let's hope this uh, works good. All right, we're gonna scan again just to be sure. Okay, sounds a lot better so far. Ah, I can still hear a misfire. But we'll figure out which one it is here in a minute when the light triggers. so much better so we're probably just 50 percent there but at least she's drivable whereas before it was barely i had to like lay on the damn brake and lay on the throttle every time i went to a stop sign that's freaking annoying do you know that so come on baby now once this thing says that we are in operating temperature how do we determine that? Either by the temperature here or the torque scan will tell us here as well. And now the idle is getting back down to normal. Before it was so low it wouldn't it wouldn't idle at all. So I don't know, I don't know if it's gonna maintain its idle, which it's not. There is the light. Let's 
Well, at least it's idling before it was not. It's dying, okay. All right, now we're gonna check the trouble code to find out which coil that is. Okay. Now we change coil one and four. Okay, what do we got here? We got a cylinder one again. Oh, is that it, really? Oh. Cylinder one. Oh, it's scanning, okay, okay, okay. Cylinder number one. Okay. Really something wrong with that cylinder. Cylinder three. So we're gonna let's switch this thing to number three to see if this will go away. Alright? Clear the codes out of that. Connected to OBD. It's my suspicion. Suspicion. It should work itself out of there after lots of driving. So, okay, that's clear now. We're gonna start it. cylinder it is here in a minute. Find out which <coughs> switch cylinder that is. Dead. Disconnected from OBD. Okay, that's what I thought. <laughs> Connected to OBD. Got to turn the ignition on, dummy. Okay, there we go. Cylinder one again. I got a feeling there's a compression issue, which is uh, understood because of the uh, the water that got into the cylinders before. Okay, number one, number one. Still got a little bit of number three there. Four faults. 
Number one cylinder, number three. I just put a good coil on number three as well. One and number three. Okay, finally I got the last two. I'm gonna install the last two new ones now. See it's burned. Burned. that have been replaced now. See if she'll idle normally. Taking this thing out for a drive and um, trying to get this thing to wear its cylinders in a little bit. I have to sometimes shift it in a neutral and drive to make sure that the engine doesn't die. That's what the result is the after effects, whatever you want to call it, the side effect. So this thing has to be driven, it has to be driven far and a lot now to wear in the cylinders better. To, uh, make my compression better because you all saw the damage to the cylinders it was kind of rusty and you can only do so much with sandpaper I didn't have my manual uh, what you call that honing machine with me which you do it by hand because I didn't have any power out there working on this car in the middle of nowhere so you know basically that's basically it so that's what we're doing right now uh, as you can see the temperature is not uh, overheated and um, the 
trouble code is not on continuously, so I get, I'm halfway there. It comes on once in a while, but not continuously, so I'm good there. So we're gonna go to a major highway here. And um, I'm gonna test drive it in a, I, I need some distance is what I need. So, but from what I'm seeing here, it seems to be getting better the longer or the more I drive it the hotter it gets, so that's good news, so. Our misfiring, I did switch the number one to number four and the four is not listed here. That tells me the coils are bad, so I gotta get three more coils. Damn it, I thought I can get away with one, but I guess not. So I'm getting close, so I'm gonna have to go get three more coils now.